Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel for another exclusive Collider interview. I am Perry Nemroff, and right now I get to talk to William Zapka from Karate Kid and Cobra Kai. It is so good to see you. I am so excited for all the good things coming your way right now. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Good to be here. So I guess let's just start with some of the biggest news of the bunch, the move to Netflix. I am curious what it was like going through all that from your perspective. Were, were you just completely in the dark until the deal was done? Well, no, we had a little idea going through. First of all, we pitched it originally to Netflix as one of our, our pitches that we, we went on. And we almost landed in Netflix at the beginning and YouTube grabbed it. Uh, so Netflix was always in the cards. Um, but once YouTube decided they weren't doing the, uh, the original content anymore uh, for scripted, uh, then it just went out into a free fall, for, for, so to speak. So it was like December 19th, I got the news that they weren't picking it up. And uh, it was about, uh, I don't know, five, six months. Then uh, and we found out. But we heard little trinkets along the way. There were a lot of people, you know, there was Hulu, I think, interested in, and uh, a lot, you know, HBO Max, whatever. And uh, so when we got to Netflix, it was kind of, uh, kind of our dream from the beginning. And uh, it's come full circle. So it's awesome. I imagine that it was probably a hot property for just about everyone out there. Was, was there ever a point when you guys were actually worried that it wouldn't find a new home, especially with some of season three maybe having been shot by then? Well, it's just it's a trying time right now. So we didn't know what the market was going to do. Um, but we uh, we had hope. I mean, I remember when the guys, John, Josh and Hayden, called me and told me about uh, YouTube not picking it up. They said, but there's a silver lining. It could go somewhere else. And don't forget, Cobra Kai never dies. So, you know, we had a feeling that uh, it would march on. Um, but, you know, there's no guarantees until it happens. And it was down to the wire, it really was down to the wire. And um, when they made their deal and uh, we got the call and uh, it was very exciting. You know, you, Sony was in, in touch with us, telling us the progression and how things were going. And but we were, you know, we were we, were, we had no guarantees for sure. So uh, I am it landed there is awesome. I'm so thrilled that it landed at such a good home. I'm obviously a huge fan of Netflix, and I feel like it's the perfect place to get an even wider viewership than you guys already have. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we already have a big fan base, which is incredible, but they have, you know, another, you know, they have kind of a global market in the world and uh, 195 million subscribers. So uh, I know the show has been translated into 30 some languages. Uh, a lot of people that haven't been able to see it globally are getting a chance to watch the first two seasons. So uh, we're excited about that. I didn't even think about that part of it. That is, that's a phenomenal perk there. Yeah. So I want to kind of hit all the stages of this franchise for you. And first, I have a Karate Kid question for you, but a very, very specific one. I was wondering if you remember what it was like filming the moment where Johnny hands Daniel the trophy. Because I know it's only one line of dialogue there, but it's kind of a line of dialogue that has to capture their entire journey in the film, in that one little moment. So even with yeah. everything going on around you guys during that scene, do you have time to really perfect the delivery of something like that? Well, you know what, it's more the delivery. That was the kind of the belly of the whale of Johnny. That was like, that was the Billy uh, in Johnny, really. That was the part of the script when I read uh, The Karate Kid and I read Johnny Lawrence. It really wasn't until uh, Cree said sweep the leg and Johnny didn't want to do it. And uh, the ending when he says, you're all right, Lulu, so good match. And um, so I was kind of pregnant with that moment for the entire time we were filming. It, you know, knowing that was coming, I, it allowed me to be, you know, as vicious and mean and tough and, uh, you know, uh, as Johnny as I, as I could be till the end. And then Johnny wakes up. So when we filmed that, I remember filming that moment like it was yesterday. It was just, it was after the whole tournament. And it was after we did this big master shot of, the full on fight, you know, it wasn't shot in pieces. It was nine, 10 cameras around and the, the tournament, we went from A to Z. And uh, that moment was captured, um, I think in the, one of the master takes and it was just alive and the fans, you know, the, the audience, the audience fans were there and uh, all that added energy and electricity to that moment and the emotion. Plus my mom and dad were in the stands and uh, I remember when I was doing the, the fight scene, I was on my knees when they said, turn around, you know, and Daniel was hurt and everybody was booing at me even when the cameras weren't rolling. I look up in the, in the stands and my mom's like, it's my son, he's a nice guy, you know. So I was kind of carrying a lot of emotion. It was very like the, the, the audience there, it was like live, live theater and they were all part of it. 
And um, so they fed that moment. So I remember that. And it was very much of a cathartic moment for me as an actor to, to let that go because that, to me, was the true heart of Johnny Lawrence. It seems like such a wonderful luxury to be able to shoot a scene like that that way. Have you guys been able to take anything as far as the production goes that really worked for you on Karate Kid and apply it even to a modern production today? I mean, it's a little different. I mean, it was a, we shot a little more in blocks in our final tournament scene. We did the Karate Kid. Out of, John Appleton had cameras everywhere. It was really like a big microphone and a videotape, you know, film camera filming everything. Um, yeah, we take a little bit of it, but uh, it's it's a new style, I think, a little bit. We have so many fights and so many moves, so it's not shot as that, but... Uh, but, but it's got the same spirit, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. So now going to the very beginning of Cobra Kai, because I know you guys got pitched revivals kind of often. So I don't yeah. know how many specifics you remember, but what would you say is just like, like the craziest, most out of left field pitch to return to the role of Johnny you got along the way? Oh, I had so many, so many people had ideas for Johnny Lawrence teaming up with Miyagi. Actually, you know what my favorite one was really was Pat Morita himself had an idea he wasn't done with Miyagi yet and this was in his uh you know last years and uh he called me he said BZ BZ I've got a great idea for a Karate Kid 4 you know or Karate Kid 5 you know you know and I want Miyagi's gonna die and he wanted him to be have a proper Okinawan burial but while he's sick he saw Johnny Lawrence as being his doctor and um I thought that was interesting so that was kind of actually the, probably the one the wildest idea I couldn't imagine and coming from Pat Morita was awesome. Uh, but these guys, uh, you know, I, I even played with trying to find something that was, you know, how do you, Johnny Lawrence kind of never died. The karate kid never went away. How do we, you know, there's gotta be some creative angle in. And um, I played a little bit with that on a music video I directed called sweep the leg by no more Kings. I played it myself trapped as Johnny, but uh, John, Josh and Hayden, our creators of the show came and they just had the, they had the map of, of where uh, Karate Kid goes from here and they laid it out. And I, I walked away from that meeting and uh, I, I felt like uh, the Johnny Lawrence and you open one crusty eye, you know, <laughs> and uh, they were bringing him back to life and, uh, and they did that. So it was really the right guys and the right timing. And, um, you know, and then Ralph jumped in and, and uh, we went for it. And now here we are. I actually have a good follow-up, but it's not from me. So as okay. press, we get the opportunity to kind of grill you guys all the time. But I recently spoke to Mary, and she had a question that she hasn't had the opportunity to ask you that she wants to pass along. My question I haven't ever asked, and I meant to ask early on, but I've always felt too, like, you know, like, oh, that's not my place. I feel a little, a little scared, uh, even though he's, like, the nicest guy ever, is probably, like, how much – of like his Johnny now he had thought about in the years between before somebody approached him about having his own storyline. So I know he had his own version when he filmed the Karate Kid of who he believed Johnny was and who he had created Johnny to be. But like how much of that thought process had gone in in those in-between years or just when somebody gave him that opportunity, is that when then when the process started of thinking about, okay, yeah, that's how this aspect plays into this. First of all, Mary, you should have asked me yourself. Uh, <laughs> you know, the Johnny that's in Cobra Kai, I, I probably would have resisted and I would not have imagined Johnny that way. To me, at the end, Johnny was liberated. He probably found a good path. So my imagination, and I never really filled the blanks in, but I, I wouldn't have imagined him being, you know, in the, in the beer in a one bedroom apartment and, you know, kind of stuck in the past too much. So uh, but the Johnny that lives in me, the kind of the, the character, the essence of him uh, was right there, ready to reach. So uh, I hadn't thought about it this way. This is, this is credit to the writers. And, uh, you know, I just connected my heart and the character of Johnny to the writing. And we have uh, Johnny Morris today. You feel it. I was wondering if there's anything from the original Karate Kid that didn't make the final cut that you think might come in handy on Cobra Kai, because I know you guys were able to use different angles for the fight in the beginning of the series. I don't know whether it's material like that, unused footage, deleted scenes, even ideas that you had brewing in your brain that you didn't have time to execute in that movie. Is there anything you would want to bring to future seasons? Well, I know there's a, there's a couple scenes, uh, scenes that were completely cut out of the Karate Kid. One is referenced, I think, in season two, um, involving an apple pie or a blueberry pie. Blueberry pie. Uh, yeah, that was a scene that we shot. That was, uh, 
that was pretty fun. And then, and then the, the scene that I auditioned for the movie was cut out. And that's a scene right before the tournament uh, at school. And that's when I walk up to Daniel at, the, at a water fountain at school and I hand him a death certificate. And he says, what's this for? And I say, you got to get your mommy to sign it if you want to be in the tournament with the big boys. And he looks at it. It's a death certificate. He says, I thought it was supposed to be no contact. And I say, yeah, well, accidents happen. And then I turn and walk away. And then he says, hey, you think you might be wrong? And I say, who? He says, your sensei, you think he might be wrong. And then my line is to walk up and grab him and go, watch your mouth, asshole. And so that was the scene that I auditioned for, for the movie. We shot that. Um, I don't know if that's going to pop up somewhere in, uh, in the future in a flashback or what. But uh, that, was a, that, was, that was the scene that uh, I auditioned for. I rehearsed uh, for weeks and weeks and weeks till I got the part. And then, ironically, that scene was cut from the film. It's a mighty dark thing to happen, but also I would expect something like that on Cobra Kai because you guys really, I mean, not to get too far into season two yet, but you guys really shocked me in a good way with how far you push it at the end of season two. Just like the intensity is through the roof. (laughs) Yes. Yes, I agree. Overall in Cobra Kai, one of my absolute favorite things about the show is how big the ensemble is and how I think there is a character that can strike a chord for just about every viewer out there. So for you, having read the script before even shooting, jumping on set, who would you say surprised you most with what they did as far as taking what was on the page and bringing it to screen and going kind of above and beyond your expectations with the part? Honestly, everybody. Uh, We did chemistry readings. I know that's a safe answer, but Truly, you know, uh, these parts were written for people to fill them up and, and embody these characters. And um, so uh, I was, I, you know, they're wonderful young actors and actors in the show. And, and to watch them flourish and embrace these characters and make them them reminded me of when I was a kid, when I was 17, 18. And, and I took Johnny on and put the suit on for the first time. So uh, to watch them and then essentially, especially to watch them grow over the, the seasons, um, is, uh, is, is awesome. I wouldn't say it's surprising, but it's encouraging and exciting. And uh, you see these guys rising to this level and it makes this, like you said, this ensemble, this great kind of choir, you know, and uh, with many themes weaving through it and many storylines and you kind of care about each character and you're invested in everybody. You can look through everybody's point of view. So um, everybody nailed it and I'm, I'm proud of everybody. It's a smart answer to spread the love to everyone because they it's all the truth. Everyone. It's not a smart answer. I would, it's a fact, you know, except, I I, except Bert. Bert. Bert really nailed it. You remember Bert? No mercy, Bert? Yeah. Bert, and, yeah. Yeah. Bert surprised me the most, I guess. Here, here's a more specific character question for you. Of all of the new ensemble in Cobra Kai, who do you think at this point in the show's run is kind of the closest to being the Johnny Lawrence of Cobra Kai? Because I, I remember that being a thing when it first started out. It's like Miguel was probably the Johnny and Robbie was probably the Daniel. Then I came to realize that they were both a mixture of both of them. But I landed in a place, and I'm curious if you agree, where I feel like Hawk, of all the characters, is probably closest to being in Johnny's position and might have the most to specifically learn from him. I agree with you on that. I think because Hawk's trajectory from where he started and, and what he's blossomed into is so extreme, but that's a, that's a, that's a version of Johnny, but kind of on steroids in a way, you know, with the, with the Mohawk and all that. Um, and, you know, you see where he comes from. I think, I think the way it's written out, um, he would be the closest to Johnny Lawrence and he's got a, he's got a heart under that pointy hair. And, uh, and he's also, uh, you know, kind of, kind of a badass. <laughs> yeah. that's definitely one way to describe no him mercy, yeah. i imagine you can't say anything about season three but just to attempt to get a couple of teases here where do you think johnny's head is at at the very beginning of the season is he kind of you know i guess back to rock bottom well how do i do this without giving it away well you saw where he was on the beach um I can tell you. I can tell you where I felt at the end of last season. That's really would be best, and that is how painful it was, really, viscerally, how painful it was to hand the keys over to Crease and to see Miguel in the in the hospital. And there was this hopelessness, and there was no season three script. I didn't know where it was going to go, so the the dead end was right there. And throwing the bottle against the car. So I kind of came into season three at that point. Um, you know, I think Johnny's growing and uh, we want to, but he's definitely going to have some downs and some ups and some downs and some ups and some sideways. 
And uh, yeah, so I guess I, I guess that's so. So you know, I mean, he wasn't doing too well at the end of season two, and uh, you know, picked up you know a little bit later in time after season two, season three does. So um, we're gonna meet the result of you know, what that what those events would do to someone like Johnny Lawrence. Uh, in the beginning of season three. You are very good at like giving us something to chew on, but avoiding spoilers. I have, I have a little earbud in here and the producers and writers are telling me what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a pass on this question if you can't do the same with this one. But again, okay. I love this ensemble and I especially love seeing characters who I think are gonna have like an itty bitty role grow into something so much more. So is there a member of the cast that you were excited to finally get to work with more in season three than you had before? Well, whether I work with them or not, I mean, John, Johnny's many times a loner, you know, he's kind of on his own and he's the man on his own path, you know, trying to figure things out. But there are a lot of characters that have been developed in season one and two that definitely flourish that, that uh, Johnny comes in contact with in a very fun way. And that absolutely was super fun and exciting. I can't wait for people to see. I mean, yeah, there's some, I'm trying to hold back. It's, you know, I know everybody's waiting for season three. We've been waiting for season three. It's not easy to, you know, see the ball kick down the field, but it's, it's what has to happen. And we're just, uh, you know, saying thankful to our fans for hanging with us and hope they invite their friends to watch the first two and get ready for the big ride because season three is incredible. I mean, it's really incredible. I was all excited when I one saw one and two on steroids, but I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to say too much. But 2021 of, though. It's hey man, March was two days ago, right? What is it? Very fair point. It's like this year's like this year doesn't. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, All I right. might have some patience for that. Yeah. <laughs> Before I let you go here, I feel like everybody out there, in addition to Cobra Kai, is kind of looking for content to watch online right now. And this is a little kind of out of left field given this conversation. But what I feel like most people don't know about you is that you are an Academy Award nominee, and you have. Wow. You have a short film that is quite good that people can check out. So That's I was true. wondering for you, what, what was that experience like being nominated? But also, I, I guess to be kind of blunt with it, you have all that success with most. Like, why didn't you do it again? I want to. I mean, I, before I became an actor, I, was, I went to film school. I didn't go to acting school. I wanted to be a filmmaker and got in the Karate Kid. And my, my acting career took off. And then I went on the side and I direct and produce and this and that. Most was uh, a labor of love, a passion project. And um, it was, uh, I want to do it again. I, I definitely want to uh, craft a story and, and produce and write, direct something like that again. Um, being nominated, I could tell you, was very surreal, but... In a way, I can. I, it's it's like when when I did the Karate Kid, for example, it was brand new, and I we we wrapped in December and it came out in June, and I didn't see much of it in between. So I it's like I did my part. I walked away. I went and there it was on the screen. I went to the premiere and there it was. With most in a film that you're involved with, I was there every single step of the way, and it was very very difficult to make this film. We shot it in Eastern Europe, and we left with no money, no budget, no country, no no cast. We went on a location scout, eight countries, and bit by bit found it. We found our cast. We wrote it. Then we got the financing for it. Involved 1930 steam trains and bridges in Poland in negative 10 degree weather. It was really difficult. Then we had a bridge break. We had to go back in the summer and reshoot it with insurance money. It was a, the making of this movie took two years for a 30 minute short, and it took a lot of me, all of me, and um, I was completely committed to it. And then we premiered at Sundance, and we went on to win all these festivals, and we won. Best of Festival in uh, Palm Springs International Short Fest, um, which opened us to be qualified for an Oscar. And we were on the list. And then they announced the list and it was unbelievable. You know, I was like, but I could, but I, I could say this way, is like walking the red carpet at the Oscars w was, was unbelievable, but it was like, I knew I was oriented in, in being there because of the years that I had spent to get there. So it was kind of like, you know, we were battle wounded walking that carpet and, uh, you know, escorting our film to uh, to the big stage. And it was uh, it was a thrill highlight of my life. And uh, for people who want to watch it, you could probably just go on YouTube and type in Most the Bridge. Um, there's many different versions that have been uploaded. It's been kind of, you know, put out there. But Most the Bridge, it's a great, it's a great show. It's, it's, it's 33 a, minutes, yeah. It's a great watch. Yeah. Speaking of that, though, have you had any interest in, you know, maybe bringing your directing skills to Cobra Kai? I have. I've talked about it with the guys lately. Um, you know, that's a, that's a, 
sensitive line when you're working with actors that are, you, you know, you're leaning on to be subjective and objective at the same time. I think in the, in the future, I could see that definitely happening once everybody's, you know, everybody had to find themselves and their positions. And to be honest, I have my work cut out for me playing this character and the many levels and the fighting and the, you know, the rehearsals and the lines. I mean, the scripts come in, the lines are, you know, pages of dialogue. It's enough for me to do that, let alone go pick locations, cameras, angles, and set shots, and then, you know, still, still do the show. So I, I, I haven't figured out how I could do that yet, but I hope to, I hope to figure that trick out. You got your hands full. Yeah. Anything you want to happen behind the lens, I hope you get the opportunity to do it. But congratulations yet again on Cobra Kai. The show, the show brings me more joy than, than you know. I freaking love it. I so appreciate it. And you're my first interview this year. Uh, and the first time I've ever talked about season three or any of this this year. So thank you, Perry. Thank you, as always, to everybody out there. If you have watched Cobra Kai, you can go watch it again on Netflix when both seasons drop on August 28th. But don't forget, if someone in your life has not watched it, I would like to bet that they're going to appreciate the recommendations. So Cobra Kai seasons one and two on Netflix, August 28th. Check it out, guys.